Discovery Othniel Charles Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope were two American paleontologists active during the late 1800s who did a little whimsical friends to enemies arc resulting in the discovery of the majority of dinosaurs, extinct mammals, and marine reptiles we know of today. Their feud also resulted in a long list of names being thrown around willy-nilly to everything they found, from small teeth to entire skeletons. This obviously created a huge organizational problem for all future paleontologists, and it has taken the over 100 years since this feud, popularized as the Bone Wars, for things to begin getting settled. Deodon is one of the organisms that got caught in the frenzy, with a ton of names being slapped onto a bunch of specimens from across the United States. The fossils that are now sort of neatly housed within the Deodon genus are known from all over the United States. Look at this map! It shows most, but probably not all instances of Deodon fossils. As you can see, there is some from an unnamed unit above the Haystack Valley member of the John Day Formation in Oregon from the Bolero Lookout local fauna of the Sespe Formation of Santa Ana Mountains, California, in Big Badlands, South Dakota, the Luskat Creek Breaks of Wyoming, the Pine Ridge Escarpment and Agate Springs Quarry of Nebraska, in Washington and San Jacinto Counties in Texas, the Vicksburg Group of the Konecou River, Escambia County, Alabama, even some in the Franklin Phosphate Pit in Florida as well as in the Ashley River Phosphates of South Carolina and Farmingdale, Monmouth County, New Jersey. Elotherium, Marsh, 1871 O.C. Marsh was a funny little guy. In 1871, he had named some fossils of Antelodonts Elotherium lydianum. Oliver Perry Hay, an American herpetologist, ichthyologist, and paleontologist active from the late 1800s till the early 1900s, correctly noted in 1902 that the mention of this name by Marsh did not constitute proper proposal of a new species. Marsh's uses of the name do not even constitute an indication as defined by the ICZN. It was designated a nomen nudum in 1903. But Elotherium was still used to name a new species of Deodon level animal by William John Sinclair in 1905, Elotherium calkensi. This name was based on a skull in partial postcranial skeleton, UCMP 953, from the John Day Formation of Oregon. The specimen is of an old individual, and although the chin tubercle is small, the associated tibia and fibula are unfused, thus it was tentatively excluded from Deodon by Spencer Lucas, Robert Emery, and Scott Foss in their 1998 paper on Deodon synonymy. Deodon, Shoshonensis, Cope, 1878 Deodon Shoshonensis was officially named by Edward Drinker Cope, that racist rapscallion, in 1878. Deodon translates from the Greek words deos, meaning hostile or dreadful, and odon, meaning teeth, with the species name of Shoshonensis paying homage to the Shoshone people of Wyoming, Idaho, Nevada, and Utah. The holotype specimen for this scientific designation, AMNH 7387, is a much damaged fragment of a mandibular symphysis, which connects the right and left mandibles and is made up of cartilage and connective tissue that is not converted to bone. This specimen also preserves the roots and or alveoli of the incisors, canines, and premolars. The three incisors are procumbent and increase in size from incisor 1 to incisor 3. The canines are large and circular in cross-section. A small diastema, which is a toothless space between teeth, separates the canine and the premolar one, and a larger diastema evidently separates the premolar one and the premolar two. No diastema separates the incisor three and canine. The tooth crowns are broken and absent, so it is impossible to describe the crown morphology or to use the wear and tear on the teeth as an estimate for the relative age of the individual. Chin tubercles are absent. Bucorus, Cope 1879 Cope then named some more Deodon bones Bucorus humerosus in 1879, with that genus name staying in use long enough for Frederick Loomis to name a second species based on Deodon fossils in 1932, which he named Bucorus angustus. 
The type specimen of this species consists of two almost complete front feet found on Porcupine Creek, South Dakota in the lower rosebud beds. They are numbered 31 through 105 in the Amherst College Museum. While these specimens were compared with Copes Bucharis humerosus by Loomis, it was evident that, though the arrangement of the bones is similar, Loomis was dealing with an animal of very different proportions. He found that the hand and finger bones of his new species were similar in length to the first one, but that those of his new species were half as wide, meaning it was a slenderer animal. Then, S. E. Foss and T. Fremd synonymized Bucharis humorosum with Deodon in 1998, and while its classification as a separate species was kept, they cautioned that the differences might still be due to individual or population variation or sexual dimorphism. Amodon, Lydianum, Marsh 1893 in 1893, Othniel Charles Marsh described a left premolar and molar tooth from Farmingdale, New Jersey. He named the fossils Amodon Lydianum. Now, as much as I dislike the idea of naming an animal based on a few specimens of teeth, mammals are distinct from dinosaurs in this regard. Mammals have some of the most unique and diagnostic teeth of any group of animals, so you could hypothetically name new genera or even species of mammals based on the differences between the shapes of the teeth. I think this also changes depending on what kinds of mammals we're talking about, but this digression has lasted long enough. The holotype Premolar 4 is very similar to the Premolar 4 of the holotype of Dinohyus holandi, which I will talk about here shortly. The teeth of Amadon differ only in the slightly larger size, about 15%, longer talon due to the larger posterior cingulate, and more prominent posterior ridges on the trigonid slope. The referred third molar differs from that tooth in the holotype of Deodon hollandi, only in being slightly longer, about 4%, and having a larger hypoconulate. In 1998, Spencer Lucas, Robert Emery, and Scott Foss thought that these differences did not merit a generic separation of the holotypes of Amodon lydianus and Deodon hollandi, and that they did not merit separation at the species level, neither. Therefore, the team synonymized Amodon and Deodon, the holotype tooth of the Farmingdale creature is slightly larger and longer than the same element in Western Deodon, which may suggest that the New Jersey animal was either larger than its relative from the American West or just had larger teeth. Simpson, in 1945, had already suggested that Deodon, Dinahyus, and Amodon represent a single genus. Brunet came along in 1979 to recognize the close similarity of the type material of Amadon to Dinahyus, but had preferred not to synonymize the two because Dinahyus was based on more nearly complete type material. Dinahyus hollandi, named by O.A. Peterson in 1905. In 1905, Carnegie Museum field collector T.F. Olcott unearthed a skeleton catalogued as CM-1594 from the Dicerotherium Quarry, three miles north of the Stenomylus Quarry, in contemporaneous beds of Agate Springs fossil beds in the northwestern corner of Nebraska. Later that year, another Carnegie paleontologist, O.A. Peterson, designated that fossil as the type or name-bearing specimen of a new species that he called Dinohyus hollandi. Several traits observable in the holotype of Deodon, AMNH7387, including the relative size of incisors and diastemata, and the lack of chin tubercle, do diagnose one genus of North American entelodonts to which the name Dinahyus is usually applied. Meanwhile, the holotype of Dinahyus hollandi, CM1594, displays all of the features of the holotype of Deodon shoshonensis, except that it has a very small tubercle on the chin. The size of the chin tubercle ranges from very small to absent in specimens that are assigned to Deodon, which is quite different from the very large chin tubercles found in the smaller Archaeotherium and other North American entelodonts. Therefore, in 1998, Spencer Lucas, Robert Emery, and Scott Foss again concluded that Dinohyus is really a bunch of bones that belong to the earlier named Deodon Shoshonensis. That makes it a synonym. Three more species of Deodon have been added to the genus over the decades since its publication, Deodon culkinsi, Minor, and Mento. 
Diodon Kalkensai was named by O.A. Peterson in 1909, then G.M. Allen named Diodon Mento based on a toothless symphyseal region of lower jaw from a possible Miocene-aged horizon in Ashley River phosphate deposits near Charleston, South Carolina. Then, Deodon Minor was named in 1932 by Frederick Loomis based on some lower jaws and miscellaneous skeletal elements from the lower part of the Harrison Formation, Stenomylus Quarry near Agate, Nebraska. And that pretty much leaves us with how it stands today. There is only one valid species, Deodon Shoshonensis, with over a dozen specimens across the United States, varying in size and possibly some shapes. Some differences may reflect sexual dimorphism, individual variation, ontogenetic differences, and regional variation. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Elephant Tier patrons Abby Smith, Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Cherry Shaw, Chris Frampton, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Ed Peretz, Isaiah Garza, Jax the Hacks, Natty Cat, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus, Staniforth Hopkins, Steve Bradshaw, Thea Svensson, and Extraterrestrial. As well as my top S tier Tyrannosaurus patrons Admin, Antron, Aphid Kirby, Cyber, Dana Manchester, Danny Van Heck, Henry Brennan, Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Joshua Mana, Panic, Radio 404, Robert Kessler, Ruben Zachariah, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, and The Dogman.